Hey everyone, JT here. Now in my last video, we talked about how I just decommissioned my old two kilowatt array. In the next video, we're gonna talk about what I replaced it with. But for now, let's take a moment and talk about an experiment I'm gonna be running for the next year. Once the 10 200 watt panels were down from the roof, we had them neatly stacked in the garden. The installers offered to take them away and have them properly recycled but I had other plans for them. Even though these panels are 14 years old, they're working perfectly. A quick wash down to remove some lichen, dirt and dust, and they were good to go. So what's the plan? Now I've seen a number of YouTube videos about vertically mounted panels. They're usually in farmer's fields, and these allow the farmers to use the land between the rows of panels for crops and to graze livestock. Now they're normally orientated in an east-west facing direction so that you get sun both in the morning and in the evening. But this got me thinking, could you mount them on fence panels in your garden? Or is there anybody out there who's making solar fence panels? I'm sure they exist, I just haven't been out to find them yet. Unlike a field, you can't always choose the direction your fences face. Now in my garden, I have a few that are in a kind of optimal direction that don't really have a lot of shading, but everybody is different. Everybody's gardens, setups, orientation, shading will differ. Now, let's have a look at how the system would work. It comprises of three parts. The panels, I'm gonna start with four 200 watt panels arranged into two strings with the panels wired in parallel to each other. Now, I'm not gonna go into the difference between parallels and serial organization, but the reason I've done this is to keep the voltage down below 70 volts. This is important for the next step. These two strings of panels are connected to an EcoFlow PowerStream microinverter. This little metal box is amazing. In fact, it reminds me of the design of a Mac Mini. It's really well designed, really well built, and it can output up to 800 watts. Now it can also accept two separate strings. So in my case, I've got two panels per string, as I said, wired in parallel to keep the voltage down to 70 volts per string, and I've got them connected to the power stream. Now, you have to be careful with the power stream. The power stream can only accept a maximum of about 77 volts per string. Please do check the documentation, don't take my word for it. And every single panel is gonna be different. They will all output different voltages. So you need to check what the panels are outputting, do the calculations, and make sure that you're not gonna to put too much power into the, or too much voltage into the inverter, otherwise you could potentially damage it. The inverter supplies power to the house via a standard UK 13 amp plug. Now when I purchased the power stream, this was acceptable and this is what was supplied by EcoFlow. However, since then, the UK regulations have been updated. EcoFlow have sent us out a new cable. This cable does not have a plug on the end and needs to be wired directly into a fuse spur by a qualified electrician. This is something I'm gonna be doing in the near future to ensure everything is safely installed. Now you may notice there's another plug next to the inverter plug, and this is connected to an EcoFlow smart plug. This goes directly into the batteries. The batteries on this system are important because they help supply power when there's not enough solar. This plug allows me to grid charge the batteries at night if there hasn't been enough power to keep them topped up during the day. A simple automation runs, it stops the inverter, it then turns on the smart plug and allows the batteries to charge. When they're fully charged, it turns off the smart plug and turns on the inverter. Otherwise we'd get in a situation where the inverter was supplying power to the house and the batteries were pulling that power back into the batteries, which would be supplied to the inverter back to the house. You see what I mean here. This could become a very circular system. Unlike my larger house inverter, the EcoFlow power stream doesn't react to loads from the house. You, if to do that, you need a bit of extra hardware. There are devices from Shelly, which you can incorporate, which will allow the inverter to ramp up and ramp down its power as the house demands extra power. However, in my case, it's supplying a sustained load, sometimes known as the base load. 
Given the panels might not always be able to supply the base load, this is where the batteries come in. Now, I have two batteries here. I have an EcoFlow Delta Pro battery, which also has an inverter built into it, but we're not using that right now. And I have a second EcoFlow add-on battery for the Delta Pro. This gives me a total of about seven kilowatt hours of storage. When the panels can't supply enough base power, the battery supplements this. When the panels are overproducing, they charge the battery as well as supplying the base load. Now this is a pretty simple system. Once it's set up, it pretty much runs itself and there's very little I have to do to keep an eye on it. But EcoFlow do have a great app and sometimes it's nice to sit there and watch the power flow as it runs either into the house or into the house and into the batteries. Um, you can waste a lot of hours staring at these apps. But why would you want a system like this? Well, it's not really designed for houses that already have a solar system. And we'll talk more about my, my house solar system a little bit later. But I already had the batteries. I already had the panels and the cables. The only thing I needed to purchase to make this work was the power stream inverter itself. And that was purchased for a few hundred pounds uh, almost a year ago now. Now I'm going to run this system for one year, from May 2024 to May 2025. And we'll see what it produces. What are the savings? And is this worth doing? I suspect it's not going to pay for itself. But with a smaller set of batteries, the numbers might just work out. We'll work that all out in a year from now once we've got the data. Now, I'm not suggesting everybody should start cluttering up their gardens by hanging panels on every single fence that they've got. It's probably the best way to upset the rest of your family. But I can imagine a system like this being used by people who live in flats or apartments, condominiums, where you have a balcony, where you could maybe hang these panels over the side rails and they could supplement your electricity supply. And in fact, this is exactly how EcoFlow advertised this system. They call it a balcony solar system. So how much power do you think it's going to generate? I hope during the summer months, if the summer in the UK actually ever gets going, um, it might generate two to three kilowatt hours a day. Now, that's not a lot, but it's a bonus, and it's on top of everything that my other solar system is producing, so I'll always take the extra free power. I hope you'll stick around and come back in a year and find out what this system has produced. That's it for this video. I hope you liked it, and if I'm lucky, I'll see you here for the next one.